Okay, so just a quick video here showcasing the uh, Neotech 500DX. When it comes to setting up and configuring the video inputs for the different options you have for CGA, EGA, and VGA, it's not very intuitive. So I wanted to do a dedicated video on how to hook all this up. But first, a little background. Uh, I have the 27-inch Neotech 500DX here on the bench. And this is actually the second one that I've got. The first one I made a video on a while back of the repair process and the capping it and reflowing it and uh, all this stuff I'm about to mention. I've already got a video on all of that. But I want to do a dedicated video on just hooking up the inputs because it's counterintuitive and I feel that that may help some people out in the future if they come across one of these monitors because it's not very easy to figure it out. Uh, it I took me a while to figure out the jumper settings and the right configuration and everything. So because of that, I want to do a dedicated video on just how to hook all that up. But uh, I, this is the second one that I've used that I have. And I picked this up locally from somebody who used to be a route operator for arcade games many years ago. And he's got a stash of monitors that have been sitting collecting dust for quite a long time that he has no use for. And I said, hey, can I come take a look and see what you got? And yeah, sure, so come on over, he said. So I went over and I looked through his stash and really the only one that really caught my fancy was this 27 inch Neotech 500DX because it's very versatile when it comes to being able to be used for you know, medium res, standard res, and VGA. So like racing games, Gauntlet Legends, NFL Blitz, any of those games that use 27 inch monitors that need either VGA or, or EGA, I want to be able to have a couple extra spares for the arcade. So I found this one. He said, here, sure, take it. I brought it home and turned it on. It did not work. Uh, I got a little bit of high voltage energization from the flyback for a split second, and then it just shut down and went click, 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 and I thought, well, that's a bummer. So I was going to do a video on the repair, but it turns out that it only needed caps. I did a reflow, a uh, full cap kit. I did an inspection. Nothing was burned up. Nothing was broken. Nothing was missing. No cracked solder joints. Everything was okay visually. So I capped it, reflowed it, and it came right back to life. So all it needed was caps and reflow. Uh, so I didn't really think there was anything worthy of a video on this. So I just did the rebuild, and it works just fine now. So that's all it needed. So uh, I'm running a VGA signal from a 16.1. As you can see, it runs and works perfectly, but it's not very uh, self-explanatory when it comes to how to hook everything up. So you have a connection here for VGA, and you have a connection here for CGA, EGA, just like the 9200s, 9400s. But unlike those, there is a jumper you have to switch for the sync to work properly. So you can see this little jumper here. It has uh, HV, and then there's a there's a middle pin, a right pin, and a left pin. The factory position was over on composite, so it says COMP right there. So the middle pin and the left pin is composite sync, and the middle pin and the right pin is a separate horizontal vertical sync. So when you're using the VGA input like this, you must have that jumper over on the H and the V. This jumper down here that says SW2COMP, that stays in that position. You do not have to mess with that one at all. It stays in the middle and the left position. But for VGA, it must be the middle and the right position for HV separate sync. So you can see here that it is operating just fine. Now, if I take that jumper and move it to the composite sync location, so now we have it on the middle and the left, we get no signal. If I take that back off and move it over to the middle and the right, my sync comes back. So you must have it in the middle and the right position for the separate HV sync for using VGA. That's how that has to work. Now, if we simply uh, move this back over to the middle and the left, the way that that's supposed to be for composite sync, we take this and move it over to CGA EGA and turn the test pattern generator on. Boom. CGA. Now if we turn off the TPG and flip it to medium res, there's no signal. Turn it back on. Boom. Medium res. Now, uh, there is one more caveat here, is that sync has to be on pin 6. You can see right there where it says comp COMP, composite sync. So the composite sync signal is on pin number 6. So if you run this to pin number 10, which is this pin here, so normally every other connection on every other monitor, pin 10 is the sync, the composite sync. 
but on this monitor, composite sync has been moved to pin six. So if you plug in a standard signal like this, where it's RGB ground, I was doing monitor testing with this on this connection, so I just have TPG over there for ease, but uh, if you run this where pin 10 is the sync on the very end, like any other standard Wells Gardner monitor, you will not get a sync signal. So you have to run this on pin six. Oh, that's loose in there. I'm losing it. It's back. So you have to have, for EGA CGA, you have to have this jumper in the middle pin and left. So this, this uh, position over here has to be for composite sync for EGA CGA. And you have to have this connection on the top CGA EGA connection. And you have to have the sync pin and pin six. So three steps there. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. Now for, for VGA, you have to move this back over to the middle and the right pin. And then we have to switch this down to here. And there you go. So yeah, kind of crowded in here, sorry. And I may have repeated a few things a number of times, but I just wanted to get this across that you have to hook this up just right or you're not gonna get a sync signal. So there you go. If you come across one of these in the future and you wanna know how to hook up your 15, 25 or VGA, uh, this is how you do it and it works just fine. So I wanted to put that information out there on a dedicated video just unto itself. Like I say, I mentioned this prior in my other 500DX video where I did the fix and the rebuild, but I wanted to have a separate video showcasing this just by itself so that, inform that information gets out there to people who might need it. Well, there you go. So thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next repair.